Welcome to the Local Marketing Source Weekly Update, brought to you by LocalMarketingSource.com. This week's Local Marketing Update is brought to you by Scott Gallagher. Scott is the co-founder of Local Marketing Source and has become the recognized expert in providing online marketing services to local businesses. Follow Scott on Twitter at ScottGallagher5 and on Facebook.com slash Scott P. Gallagher. Hey, well, good afternoon, everyone. Scott Gallagher here with Local Marketing Source, bringing you our weekly local marketing industry update. Now, next week's LMS member call is going to be Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central or 5 p.m. Eastern, and that's Wednesday, March 30th. Well, <clears throat> you know, the last couple of weeks have been a little bit slow with what's going on with local, and uh, I wanted to provide some content of value. And uh, as we as we do, I either talk about different things that's going on in the agency, different strategies to uh, to get these businesses listed on Google. And uh, well, this week there's a few things that I wanted to share. Some information about uh, search volume and search volume on desktops versus mobile desktops, and how that's changed recently, and what you know what's what's going on inside of Google in regards to these you know, these mobile devices that are out and all the aspects of search um there's been a lot of talk about link building and getting exposure that's out there and i wanted to share an article that's you know hitting mainstream right now in search engine land and it's something i've been saying for a long 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 time is that you know link building is a human endeavor you know all these different automation tools that's out there and really what the search engines are are, are looking for uh, it comes down to human relationships. And mark my words, SEO is all about relationships, just like traditional business that's out there. There are different ways to be able to offer this. Sure, you can go out and charge a few hundred bucks a month and just acquire a bunch of profiles for a client and leave it at that. But that's not really what's going to get them the ultimate exposure that, that's necessary or the real marketing that's you know going to provide different value. And finally, um, on that note, I want to talk about the local marketing ecosystem and what is true to the local web. So, I, uh, I'm always trying to find ways on how to put it. And SEO, you know, I, I say, well, it's just marketing. It just comes down to marketing. There's no... There's no software, there's no tools, there's no easy way of going out and getting these businesses ranked. And, it, you know, that seems to be some of the theme of, of today's discussion. But first, let's get into some of, this, uh, some of this data. And as you know, Google's got a variety of different market share, uh, depending on who you're talking to and, and what, you're, what you're getting from it. I, I utilize uh, Comscore's search and just to give an overview of overall search market share. Now, this is not desktop or, um, sorry, this is desktop. Right now, I'm going to talk about desktop search marketing market share and then mobile marketing share. And mobile, just so you know, has got approximately 60% of all searches across the board that's out there. But on the desktop of that 40%, Google still holds a commanding 65% market share, or Microsoft or Bing is at 21%, Yahoo is at 12%, and everybody else is shares a 2% market share. So, you know, Google is still three times the size of Microsoft and five times the size of Yahoo. Now, Desktop search volume has seemed to have peaked, and that may have peaked a couple of years ago, and it's slowly declining. Well, that's, even though there's more and more people getting on the internet, uh, there's been a massive shift in the last two years on mobile searches. And that's where, you know, they crossed the line where, like I said, uh, 60%. Now, on mobile devices and mobile searches, and remember, mobile searches are 60% of all search volume that's out there. Google has a commanding 90.4% market share. All the others, that includes Yahoo and Bing, 
are consistently declining month over month over month um, in the last year and a half. And so th that's a big, massive number. You know, Google had a commanding share of the market to begin with, but now on mobile devices, it's astronomical. Apple has, has tried, you know, to develop what they're doing and they've just completely failed. And Apple doesn't fail at, at very many different, different elements. You know, I want to tell you a little story. And this story goes all the way back to 1996. And it was when the founders of Google, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, founded the organization. They were, uh, what, Larry was in third, second year and Sergey was in third year. Um, Stanford University and, you know, they had to do a thesis. And Larry turns around and says, well, geez, everything on the Internet, it's so hard to find information. Maybe we can build a computer program that's going to find information a little bit easier on the Internet. Well, that's where their school project was born, and that's where the first algorithm was born. And the way that they evaluated, they chose to evaluate websites, they just looked at the real world. They looked at Larry's father, who was a scientist, and he recognized that when his scientist got published by a book or a magazine, his authority as a scientist went up. And when that citation got cited again, his authority continued to arise, to rise as an expert on that field. Well, the internet is just merely a collection of web pages, and web pages are, are merely there to convey information over to us, over to the reader or the viewer. And that information can be measured based off of authority, and, and therefore the algorithm started based off of links that were pointing to web pages. These links gave them authority. We started to learn as SEO people that we can get a PR rank, a, a page rank value of the page that was pointing in. And there was a time that we could, I could get any keyword ranked, um, get a web page ranked for any keyword just by firing a few thousand links at it. And you'd ask, well, how do you do that? And, you know, we'd create one article. We'd go and post that article to 100 different sites. Well, there was software that automated all of this, so it was really easy. And we could pay people really cheaply to, to, to upload that and distribute it. And then I'd take that same article and throw it into a spinning software, and you'd have five versions of that article. So one article that cost me four bucks written by somebody in India could give me 500 links to a website with targeted keywords on it, and boom. You know, within 30 days, you were getting you were getting rankings. When YouTube started to get effectiveness, remember Traffic Geyser that came out. We could take one video and turn it into 16 different versions of a video with different file formats and different titles. That was before YouTube even recognized, you know, tried to look at the content of a video. So we'd take one video. We'd take a PowerPoint. We'd take that article that we wrote, had 500 links from that article. We'd create a PowerPoint presentation from that, do a voiceover on it, and create 16 different versions of, of a YouTube video. And if you recall, YouTube had influence of like 24 hours. We could, get, we could get video content ranked in the top of the Google SERP within 24 hours. Well, those days are gone. And... The days of, of getting multiple links and getting multiple exposure just does not work in the long term. You're going to ultimately hurt your clients in the long term. Now, when I say that it's just marketing, well, an example of marketing, I work with, with chiropractors. So I'll use that example. And I use this example in front of them all the time. I say, listen, doc, you know, you're in the business of wellness care. And what if you wrote an article that, and I'll use my local community of Algonquin, what if you wrote an article that aided that helped the local community in becoming healthier by boiling bone marrow or making chicken noodle soup. And you could share some of the details of the benefits of this chicken noodle soup, that it clears out your, your gut and your gut produces more serotonin than the brain. And the brain, you know, when, when, when people deal with ADHD and ADD and all this type of stuff, it's because, you know, the receptacles inside your brain are inhibiting the serotonin and you clear out your gut you can produce more of this serotonin that goes to the brain and you feel happier that's the science behind it well when we were kids we knew that when we were sick mom would make us chicken noodle soup and we'd feel better well it's true you do because there's science behind that 
And so if that doctor wrote that, wrote that article and the local newspaper published it, even forgetting about the internet, that local doctor's authority in that local community goes up. You're hearing some semblances here about authority and exposure. So it's a great marketing strategy or a press release. You know, there's 50 different, do a Google search and, and type in press release ideas. And then you're going to find sites that are going to give you 50 different reasons why a business can write a press release. You can practically write a press release for a business every single week if you wanted to. But let's let's break it down into 12 months. That's four a year or even, or, sorry, four quarters. That's, you know, every three months or even every month. That's 12, 12 a year. And, you know, getting that published by a local newspaper or local publications, they're constantly looking for newsworthy content that local businesses are doing, you know, a charitable event. You spend 50 bucks with the local school, the local college as a, as a charity piece, and boom, you've got a reason for a press release that gets published in the local newspaper. 50 bucks, you know how expensive it is to create ads inside the local newspaper? But they're craving for this type of content. So that's real marketing. And now the internet, recognizes this and passes that authority over on an organic front and organic search, right? Well, a lot of people miss that and get confused as well. Where, where, where do I distribute it? Well, listen, we're marketers. And the first thing of marketing is understanding an audience, segmenting that audience. So you could be dealing with all plumbers. You could be dealing with all chiropractors at your agency, like I do. And well, chiropractor A versus chiropractor B is going to be marketed different. They're going to have a different audience that they're going after. Maybe they're a pediatric provider. Well, how am I going to segment that market group? Well, pediatric means kids, right? So patients below the age of 12. But decision makers are the parents. So that chiropractor is going to create content that makes parents happy, which parents want their kids to be taken care of. They want their kids to have fun. Uh, they want their kids to learn new things. And so maybe that chiropractor is going to create fun content that kids can understand that, you know, eating healthy is good, blah, 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 blah. Versus chiropractor B that may have graduated from the same school and has got the same education. But where are they going after? Maybe they're going after sports rehab. Maybe they're going after physiotherapy. Maybe they're going after automobile injuries. And so the content that I'm going to create is based off of their particular audience. Well, guys, with that right then and there, there's no automated software that's going to know this type of stuff. You've got to create the content first to let it know. And the only way that you're going to know this stuff is through a real relationship, through an understanding and a meeting with individuals, with your, your clients. I think that's called holistic SEO is what our industry is starting to coin that. And, you know, the different levels of quote unquote SEO, holistic SEO, hell, it's just marketing. That's really what it comes down to. And, you know, these are services that you can charge anywhere from 900 to a couple of grand a month is, you know, the going rates in the United States for, for these types of businesses. Of course, depending on who you're going after, it, you know, it's a determination. In my case, chiropractors, they don't have a lot of money. You know, you're welcome to join me and go ahead to head in that industry, but you're paying me to teach you. And if you want to go ahead to head, that's, that's fine. But mark my words, they don't have a lot of money. You know, we have that discussion. You can take us, um, the courier industry that I worked in. They had money. I mean, they have to buy fleets of vehicles. Uh, plumbing. They have money. They're charging, you know, 600 bucks just to get your main drain routed. And they're there for 45 minutes. So. You know, when I talk about link building being a human endeavor, these are somewhat the mainstream sites are starting to discuss. Yeah, I've been saying this for years, that SEO genuinely is straight up, excuse me, marketing. 
And the best way to get the best links require human interaction. You want to be published by the local newspaper? You better give that editor a phone call or show up and invite them for lunch. It's about personal relationships. You want to get a post on a particular industry blog? Get that guy on the phone. Even better, get them on Skype and use the camera. You see, there was a study back in 67 called the Meham study. And from then, there's been a lot of other studies that have come from it. Tony Robbins says it himself. 93% of all communication is nonverbal. Where the hell does that come from? Well, that, that statistic specifically comes from this original study, and it's been done over and over and over. But it basically says we have three ways to influence human behavior. So if you're looking to go out and get laid one weekend or get a, you know, a significant other or you're a, a, a child um, that's asking for something or you're a salesperson that's trying to close a new deal, you've got three tools at your disposal to try and influence that person from saying yes, and those are the words that we choose to say. You know, I want to go to the store. Then there's the tone of our voice, and I can change that exact phrase just with my tone. I could say, I want to go to the store, or I want to go to the store. You know, I've said two completely different things, just based, just changing my tone and using the exact same words. So I'm going to vastly influence somebody differently with my tone than I am with the words. But the one thing that influences human behavior even more than that is our physiology. There are so many subtle cues. You know, I watch these documentaries and whatnot. That, what is it, 37 muscles to make a frown and 17 to make a smile or, you know, something along those lines. But there's also a difference between a fake smile, which uses the same muscles as making a frown, than it does to do a natural smile. So when you make somebody laugh, and they're naturally laughing, or they're fake laughing, they're using more energy and muscles to do that fake laugh. And a lot of us intuitively can pick up on that. Your gut feels it. Of course, you try to see through it and get through your gut. But there's so many subtle cues that go on inside the eyes, inside the hands, the, 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 our posture, the, everything with our physiology that supports the message that we're trying to convey. In other words, influence that individual's behavior. So if that's the case, 55%, it says 55% of the weight is on our physiology. 37% is, uh, is our tonality. And 7% is, our, is the words that we say. It's a huge difference. And if that's, if that's accurate, which I've got to assume it's accurate, well, you want to influence somebody from publishing your client's content. What are people doing? They send a gosh darn email. So you've got a 7% ability to influence human behavior, not to mention they're getting inundated quite a bit with emails. I mean, I, it's, I hate my email box. I get so much garbage. It's tough to influence. You know, I sell information online. And I've been doing it for seven years. And my ability to influence human behavior in an email is tough. You know, we have a 7 8% open rate. And it's not the same 7% of people. It's how every one of you guys have bought into our service. But what's come about from that is video. Well, now with video, I can convey my tone and my physiology. So keep that in mind. Uh, when you are trying to get this content exposed, if it's on the local chamber of commerce, if it's, you know, in different local publications, if it's uh, the newspaper or industry publications, pick up the phone and talk to them or hop on your camera with Skype. That's so much better. Remember, guys, links are for people and they're not for the search engine spiders. And this all started with the penguin algorithmic update approximately four years ago. So on that note, you know, 
we, we I want to talk a little bit about what the true local web is. So, you know, if, if you're just in Yelp or you're just in the Yellow Pages, you're not truly local yet. You're missing out on the audiences native to a particular city. So, yes, you have to be in those big directories. And marketing to the true local web means creating campaigns relevant to audiences where they live. So, what do I mean by that? Well, the true local web is comprised of different websites that are published by actual local organizations. We've talked, you know, I give the examples of um, the Chamber of Commerce as, as one, or, you know, the, you we're constantly finding new local publications. We just discovered a new one in the last couple of days of walking into a client's office, and it was put out, and it was a free thing. Um, but it could also be, you know, you also got to start thinking of uh, elements of joint ventures. And so what's a, you know, within the chiropractic world, where's a joint venture? Well, they closely parallel the massage world or the acupuncture world. And we can provide content to these partners that can give exposure within the local community. Um you know, local businesses that have brick and mortar, they're involved into the community with real people. And that's really what we're trying to leverage on an ongoing basis with, with the relationships. It's true local PR or press information. There's local blogs that are out there um, that have the authority. But mark my words, guys, it comes down to in-person engagement. And that's where the true local tactics are going to lie for you to rank your clients high in the search engines. So that comes to the conclusion of this week's update. Um, I'm going to take uh, 30 seconds now and come back and answer any questions that you guys might have. Be right back. Well, thanks for watching the local marketing industry update. We've got these things coming out every single week. So if you liked with what you heard, just click the button right above me right here to subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to get a little bit more, right over here, go check out localmarketingsource.com. We've got free reports that you can grab. You can even register for our free marketing course to get in and see the portal. Or just go ahead and follow us on some of the social channels. We'll be around. Until next time.